In year 13, we've encountered elements that have ex expanded octets when we do their lower structures. And because of this, that means there are some molecules and some ions that have got more complex shapes that we have to learn. So this video is going to be on those that have got five regions of electron density, whether they're lone pairs or bonding pairs around the central atom. These are very hard to visualize in three dimensions without something three dimensional to play with. So I've grabbed some pens that hopefully are going to help with this. But basically what we've got is our, we've got three regions of electron density that are evenly spread out like an equilateral triangle like this. So with 120 degrees between each of them. That's as far as they can get spread out because they're repelling each other. Remember, this is all about electric repulsion. Then we've got one on top and one underneath. So what we end up with is something that looks a bit like, and it's going to be hard to do with my hand, so bear with me, a little bit like this, with one going away into the board. How the heck are we going to draw this on a two-dimensional piece of paper? The way we draw it is the one up and down and the one off to the side get drawn on the same plane, like the letter T. And you'll see that's important just below my diagram for one of the shapes. The other two, one comes out at us, so we show that as a triangle, and one goes away into the whiteboard, so we show that as a dashed line, um, Sometimes you'll see them drawn as dashed lines that get bigger or smaller. So like this or this. They're both the same. They, they are showing the same thing. Something disappearing into the board or into the page. This shape is creating two triangle-based pyramids, effectively. So we call it a trigonal bipyramidal electron cloud. If there was something on every one of those, the shape of the structure would be a trigonal bipyramid. So it be trigonal bipyramidal. Um, a good example there would be PCL5. So I'm just going to jot that one down. PCL5 would be an example of something that is trigonal bipyramidal. But sometimes we have molecules and ions that have lone pairs of electrons, they're not all bonding. So, because we don't use the lone pairs as part of our shape, they only determine the bond angles, we need to have a look at what those shapes would be. So the first one that I'm going to look at is the I3 negative ion. It has got three lone pairs around the central iodine, and these two iodines um, are obeying the octet rule with a single bond. What that ends up being is if I've got my iodine in the middle and my other two iodines either side, we've got a lone pair of electrons sticking out this way, a lone pair sticking out that way, and a lone pair straight down. They're all 120 degrees away from each other and repelling each other as far as much as, as far away from each other as they can. And these two bonding pairs of electrons are 180 degrees away from each other. So that's really, really stable or more stable than any other arrangement. If I use one of the others, then I start getting bond angles that are much less than 180 degrees, so they end up being repelled away until they are on that plane, which is the up and down in my original diagram. So I've rotated it. If I have two pairs of, sorry, two lone pairs of electrons and three atoms bound to it, so something like chlorine trifluoride, so where each of these Ys is a fluorine and the X is chlorine, and chlorine is having an expanded octet, then what we end up with is literally a T-shape. So we've got this, the letter T. Again, this is looking at our maximum bond angles we can get. This way we can still get a 180 degree angle between two of the bonding pairs. So it's basically a building up on this one. And the next one coming in is, at a, is, although it's only 90 degrees away, it 
these electron clouds out here of lone pairs are 120 degrees away. So it's still the best arrangement for repulsion of all of these. You might think, oh, wouldn't it be better to have everything at 120? Well, maybe, but actually, of course, 180 degrees is a bigger angle than 120. So that's why this happens for repulsion. These two can get 180 away from each other, which is a lot more stable than three things being 120 when there's lone pairs involved. And the last one, this one's really hard to, to show, but basically, when you've got one lone pair, we're just going to fill in another one of those. Now, it's easier if you spin it up the other way and have the one going into the board and the one coming out of the board showing. And if you tilt it up, they create the base, the base of a seesaw. So they would be sitting like, can I do this with my hands, like that, and then the seesaw bit, the straight bit, 180 degrees, is across the top, and if you can imagine that being a seesaw rocking. So, two sitting like that, but one into the board and one out of the board, and then the rest of the seesaw is across the top like that. Imagine a little people sitting on each end and there you go there's your fulcrum created by these one into the board one out of the board so those are our new shapes of five regions of electron density we still have to look at six regions as well which is of course going to have some new shapes again um, but a lot of them are double ups of these or very similar to these so it's not too bad so there we are, five regions of electron density. So when the octet rule is being expanded, or the octet is expanded, you are going to get some new shapes. Linear for this is still something quite familiar, but now we have T-shaped, which is a brand new one, seesaw-shaped, and trigonal bipyramid when all of them are filled in with atoms.